Good morning, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A welcome to worship, and we are pleased that you have gathered with us either in person or online. God is always present with us. But before we join our voices together this morning, let us just take a moment to close our eyes, to gently breathe in, and to breathe out. Prepare our hearts for the Holy Spirit to enter in. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join our voices together in our opening words of faith based on Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord with our whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord, full of honor and majesty. God is full of honor and majesty. The Lord is gracious and merciful. God shows us the power of the works done to give us the heritage of the nations. The works of God's hands are faithful and just. God's work is performed with faithfulness and uprightness. They are established forever and ever. Holy and awesome God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you for the sake of the world, for you so love. Forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and and also also with you. you. And let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and I would love to invite our students to come forward for a message this morning. Good morning, friends. How are you? Why don't you come up a little closer here today? Perfect. (coughs) This morning, we are going to hear a story that Jesus tells some people about light and salt. Do you know about light and salt? Don't? We have some lights on now, right? They're nice and bright, right? And have you ever seen one of these things on a table, maybe? Maybe at your house or in a restaurant or someplace. And if I put some in here, how big are those? Are they big or small? How small? Little, little? Yeah. Wow. Those are specks of salt. Specks are small, aren't they? But Jesus tells us that it doesn't matter how big we are, that we should still tell other people about Jesus. Even if you're as small as a speck of salt, can you tell people about Jesus? Yeah, you can tell them about Mission Possible and how you come and learn and how you go to Sunday school and you learn, right? All about Jesus. But Jesus also talks about, what do you suppose will come out of this? Light. Light? You turn those on at home and you get some light, right? Okay. How about we start singing this little light of mine? Can maybe they help us too? This little light of mine. Wait, wait. How come my light's not coming on? Well, nope. I forgot to plug it in. Hold on, everybody. Gotta open this up, plug it in. Okay, let's do it. Wait, now what's the problem? Oh, <gasps> all right. smart. So we know that if we are just a little speck of salt, (coughs) we can still tell other people about Jesus, right? But we also know now that you have to plug in and you have to turn on in order to be able to do that with other people, right? Because we're like light. We have to plug ourselves in and remember about things that we've learned, and then we have to turn our light on to tell people about it, right? That's amazing. Thank you for your help this morning. Can we pray really quick? One, two, three. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for helping us to remember that even if we are as small as a speck of salt, we can still tell others about you. Thank you, Lord, also for helping us to remember that We are indeed the light of the world and that you shine so bright in each of us. Help us to share it with others. In all this we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up.
The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Shortly after the return of Israel from exile in Babylon, the people were troubled by the ineffectiveness of their fasts. God reminds them that outward observance is no substitute for genuine fasting that results in acts of justice, <coughs> such as feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and clothing the naked. Beginning with the first verse. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? It is not the fast that I choose. To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. It is, not shared, it is not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself with your own kin. Then your light will shall, shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. Word of God, word of life. The New Testament reading is from the first book, or the book of 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Though people such as the Corinthians are enamored with human philosophy and wisdom, Paul continuously presents God's hidden wisdom, which is Jesus Christ crucified. True spiritual maturity involves judging ourselves and ourselves in light of God's revelation in the cross, beginning with the first verse. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, Though it is not a wisdom of this age or of rulers of this age, we are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for us who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except for the human spirit that is within. So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Word of God, word of life.
invite you to rise in body or spirit. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus encourages his followers to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, doing good works and keeping God's commandments. Beginning with the 13th verse. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. And let us pray. O God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. We, in today's world, we tend to think of salt simply as a flavoring enhancement for our food. A spice receiving bad press for its role in causing high blood pressure. If you ever look at the ingredients lists on things, you will often see that sugar and salt are everywhere and seemingly in almost everything. People on salt-restricted diets will easily tell you it is a struggle to find low-sodium or sodium-free foods, especially ones that taste good. Indeed, the form of table salt we know in North America today is a chemically synthesized and purified form of sodium chloride that cannot not taste salty. But this is not how salt was experienced in the time of Jesus. Salt then was a mixture of a variety of compounds. The more salts in those compounds, the more valuable it was because it increased the amount of saltiness. Therefore, the more inert and inactive the compounds in the mixture were, the less salty and less valuable it was. In the time of Jesus, it was so rare that sometimes salt was used as wages instead of money. Based on its salt intensity flavoring amount, the higher its value. 
Few things in life are more ordinary than salt. And whether we realize it or not, most of us have already interacted with it this morning or will before the day is over. It is used to make leather and pottery, soap, detergents, rubber tires, clothes, paper, cleaning products, glass, plastics, and pharmaceuticals. It also sits largely unnoticed on hundreds of millions of home and restaurant tables around the world. Its ordinariness makes it an obvious candidate for Jesus to use as an illustration. Salt had a number of purposes even in the ancient world. At least four of them are relevant to Jesus' words about his disciples. Salt was used as flavoring, like today, preserving, sacrificing, and fertilizing. Flavoring still makes sense for today, but what about those others? Preserving. Salt was the ancient equivalent of refrigeration. If you wanted to stop meat or fish from decaying, you could rub in salt and make it edible for longer periods of time. This was the main reason salt was so valuable. Roman soldiers were sometimes paid in salt, which, as an aside, is the origin of our word salary. Hmm. Sacrificing. This may well be related to the previous two functions of salt, although it is probably less familiar to us. Early in Israel's history, Moses explained how Israel was to offer sacrifices to the Lord when it was written this way. You shall season all of your grain offerings to the Lord with salt. And then there was fertilizing. Several ancient civilizations used salt as a fertilizer for the soil. And depending on the conditions, it could help the earth retain water, make fields easier to plow, release minerals for plants, kill weeds, protect crops from disease, stimulate growth, and increase yields. Literally, Jesus uses the phrase of being salt of the earth because of all of that. Jesus also says, you are the light of the world. During the time of Jesus, light was also a precious commodity. You did not have the marvelous invention of flipping on a switch and illuminating a room in moments notice. When it got dark outside, you lit a lamp, an oil lamp. And Jesus speaks about how it would be foolish to put that lamp under a basket because, number one, it might have actually extinguished the light, but it also would have hid the brilliance for the house. We today have the ease of flipping on a light switch and having a room illuminated seems so ordinary and easy. Yet any lamp that is flicked on, it, would, it still would matter if it was put under a bushel basket, wouldn't it? Even one lamp can light up a big room. We are the light. We are to let our lights so shine before others, to see our good works, that they glorify God in heaven, solidifying those commandments, especially to love God and to love neighbor. With all of this talk about saltiness and light, Jesus is trying to make a point here about two powerful and valuable and at the same time precious commodities, salt and light. Alongside of these precious commodities, Jesus has an underlying message. It is what discipleship looks like, our role in the world as Christians. You see, my friends in Christ, what Jesus is trying to tell us is easily missed in those phrases. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. But if we look back at the original Greek, It points and reveals itself easily. It would read more like y'all, plural. Y'all are the salt of the earth. Y'all, plural, are the light of the world. 
Not only is this the you plural, but the verb is insistent that we are those things right now, not in the future. Right now, y'all are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Now. So Jesus sees us as these prized, precious, valuable, and powerful commodities right now together in community. In these words from Jesus today, this is what I hear. Each community as a whole is challenged to work together to fulfill its corporate mission of serving as salt and light for the world. To serve as a, an equalizer so that we make the soil more productive and fruitful for the mission of God. We are to serve as a torch of light, for we cannot and should not cover our lights under a bushel basket, hiding our spirit-given gifts from the mission of God. But Jesus does not leave us to ourselves. Uh-uh. Remember, he says, y'all do it together. For our salt and light do not simply exist for our own sake, but for the good works and the glory to our Father in heaven. The reason this matters is that Jesus specifically describes his people as the salt of the earth, which is in a rural farming culture. This is significant. We get this. As we offer ourselves in obedience, we become the seasoning in a world that is craving a new flavor. Followers of Jesus, we are the light. We are like light. And we spread our light when we share the goodness that God gives to us. Remember the children's time from earlier when that lamp would not shine at all until it was plugged in? And then it did not shine until we turned it on? <laughs> That's us too, isn't it? If we are not connected to the wall and flicked on to the on position, we are not going to shine. Followers of Jesus, we are like salt. Although we are ordinary and everywhere, we, intend, we are intended to spread throughout the world and enhance it, adding flavorings to what would otherwise be lost without God drawing out the blessings of whatever is good, and then shining Christ's light on the goodness and promises of the cross and the waters of the baptisms, and providing a contrast by being distinct, different, and precious. Think about it. What if Christ had chosen to put his gifts of grace and mercy under, under a bushel basket? or chosen not to spread its salt among the good soil? What if Jesus had chosen not to go to the cross for our darkness of sin and for the daily light of forgiveness for our lives? Is not Jesus really saying that it is silly for us to think that we can love and serve him and not do good for those around us? Jesus is pointing to us, that we are the soil that has been spread with the salt of the earth. We are the city on a hill or by a lake that cannot hide its light. This week, I know I'm a few weeks behind doing this, but I was organizing my 2023 folder where I keep all of the lists of helpers for worship from the PA operators to the video camera operators, the ushers, the altar guild, the assisting ministers, the communion bread makers and servers, and the acolytes and the offering counters. Plus, in this folder is a copy of the list of all of the ways that you have said that you will serve when called upon. And your willingness to share your time and your talents. Are you plugging in? Are you turning yourself on for the Lord? No matter the age, how big, how little like a speck of salt, you are all able to share your light with the world by volunteering and sharing your gifts, praying, being in your community, stretching wider to the world. 
if all of us together, y'all, extend our gifts of being salt of the earth and bright lights for the world, we get it done, don't we? But if we do not do it together, the experience of Christ Lutheran's worship, fellowship, education, mission, as we know it would be lost. We are blessed over and over again by the ways that we all share our time with the church because it spreads throughout the world. Thank you for that. Thank you. Y'all are the light of the world. Y'all are the salt of the earth. For y'all of this place, your partnership in ministry, I give thanks to God. And let us pray. Gracious God, your Son, our Savior Jesus, is the light of the world. Grant that we who are called in his name walk in his light, may live in ways that shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that Christ may be known, worshipped, and spread to the ends of the earth. May we joyfully undertake the task set before us at Christ Lutheran, that through your church we may be your instruments to bring light and peace to a dark and troubled world. We recognize the sacrifice that your son made to preserve us, to offer ourselves in obedience of sacrifice to enrich the soil, to ensure our righteousness, and make us productive and fruitful in this world. We boldly claim, Lord, we are the salt of your earth. We are the light of your world. And all God's people said, Amen. <clears throat> to rise in body or spirit and let us declare our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Lead our communities into deeper relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, inspire our wonder at creation. From the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night, satisfy the needs of the earth so that all living things bear witness to you about your abundant grace and continue to shout your praise. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in church, business, and industry. Provide equity and equality to those oppressed. Feed those who are hungry. Adequately employ those who are underemployed. Give voice to the voiceless. Bolster the addicted. House the homeless. Forgive those who fear they are unforgivable. And open our lips, our hands, our hearts to any in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, you are victorious over sin, death, and all that separates us from you. Let us pray for all that draw near. Those who feel alone, await test results, are in crisis or ill, quickly send your healing for all we know by name. For Elton and Connie, for Grant and Terry, for Josie and Bard, for Lloyd and June. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, shape our congregation to be the salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Grant your discernment to all who are struggling with decisions and matters of the heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for those who, with unshaken faith in Christ, shines forth in their witness, especially for Sally Holman. Keep all who grieve in your remembrance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please take a moment and share the Lord's peace. few community announcements to lift up this morning. Uh, first of all, we are just short a couple of uh, folks that would be willing to pair up with an actor to do a Lenten, um, a Lenten uh, little skit. If they're not long, the scripts are all written, um, all set to go. We just need to have a couple more folks that are willing to step into that role and share their gifts in that way. Also, uh, it is according to our Constitution that two weeks prior to the annual meeting that we begin to announce that in church. So here is your first of two announcements. So the annual meeting is not till February 19th, but at the back of the sanctuary today is a printed copy of the annual report. They were also emailed out to you this week, so you can certainly take a look at it online that way as well. 
Also this week, uh, in preparations for maybe taxes or different areas of your life, your financial giving statements are at the back of the um, uh, sanctuary, just right outside the doors on the bench, alongside of any offering envelopes that have not been picked up yet. So we invite you to find all of those things. It's like, it's like a little breadcrumb trail as you leave church today. So make sure you find all of those things as you head out. Also, the cemetery is planning to do the next round of tree removal on Saturday, February 11th. Um, we would uh, invite those of you that have questions to see Marv Kermeen, who is one of our ushers this morning, or some of the others that are on the cemetery committee. I know Calvin is here. Um, am I missing someone? Roger Breifogel is here, so there's other folks, but connect with them to see what their needs are, and they are still working on determining a time to start, but if you get your name on their list, they'll be sure to be in contact with you. We ask that those that are helping that day are 16 plus in age, just because of the, uh, well, we want to make sure everybody is safe. Let's just put it that way. Um, so check in with those folks. Um, oh, Gary is upstairs too. He's also on, on the cemetery um, committee as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, and we have ordered trees that are a little more hardy type of trees um, that should not be affected by the disease that happens and they start to lose all their pine needles. So we're really, really excited with that. I think we found out that they're $20 a tree. So if that's something that tugs at your heart to be able to help provide in the re, uh, re-beautification after the storm, those are some ways to also plug in. We thank you for the many ways that you do share your times, your talents, and your treasures. At this time, we'll receive the Lord's offering. I invite you to rise and body your spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray.